It all happened very quickly this week, didn't it, Farrah and Leon? Uh, do you think he is the right man for the job? Well, time will tell, <laughs> ultimately, of, of whether the FA have made the right decision. I'm encouraged by it. I'm excited by it. I think the, the talk was, should we stay with, with an English manager? Should we promote from within? Um, you know, it's, it's a difficult conversation. Gareth Southgate was a success story, bringing him up. Lee Carsley, I hoped, as a former teammate, might be able to, to fill that, that, that void. But, yeah, I think when you look around at who could potentially come in and, and replace Thomas Tuchel, when you look at uh, the English managers, are they ready? Mm -hmm. uh, are they successful with regards to winning trophies? Can we wait until, until a manager develops with the squad? And, and by doing that, you're wasting the, the quality and talent we've got within the squad. Or do you go and get, and get a manager that is ready, mm -hmm. proven, uh, been working in England already, knows the Premier League, knows the players? I think they've, uh, I think they've took their time, and I think, I think they've probably found the right guy. Do you think they took their time? Because it does seem like all of a sudden, going from the international fixtures and Lee Carsley, really, you just said, obviously, former teammate, not shouting about that he wanted the job. So it's like seemed like it has happened fast because of that. Yeah, but I think Lee Carsley, where, I, I think the FA have been looking. I think mm -hmm. Lee Carsley always knew he was the interim manager. I think the FA have been looking probably before Gareth Southgate even left his, his position. Uh, in the summer, so I do think that that is taking your time. They did they they allowed an interim manager just to give breathe and space. They have allowed it up till you know January the first when Thomas Tuchel will will eventually take take over. Lee Carsley was fighting a lot of questions off about yeah. about, about are you going to take the job forward? And I think ultimately he knew this wasn't his turn. The FA had already uh, got Thomas Tuchel involved, so it was mm -hmm. a difficult situation for him. But I do think they took their time and I do think that, uh, that they ticked all the right boxes in trying to appoint the right manager. OK, Farrah, what do you think about the 18-month contract then? I think it's a statement. I think, you know, he's been brought in to do one job and that is to win the World Cup. That's what it looks like on paper. I think, you know, it's probably the shortest term in terms of an England manager being given a contract so short. So I think he knows his job. For me, as, as Leo mentioned there, it's an exciting appointment. Um, I think if you're not excited as an England fan by a manager coming in that is a, a proven winner, then, then there's something wrong with us as a nation. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really looking forward to, to him coming in. And I think Leon mentioned it there. We can look at English coaches. There are some good young English coaches, not quite proven, not quite doing enough. And they need that experience and exposure, which they're getting. You look at the likes of Gerrard and Lampard and Rooney, if you think of young English managers that have been given opportunity at club level and aren't quite at, at the levels to kind of take a big job like this. So mm. I think it's a great appointment. You said about people being excited, though, but there has been talk about people wanted an English person. So do you think that it has to be from that? Because people um, are not happy. Of, of that... course. I understand it from both point of views. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an England fan. I want England to be successful. I want England to win trophies uh, and go to tournaments and do that. And I think... In terms of that, I think Tuchel could be the, the, the manager that moves us forward. If I can relate it to anything, I look at the women's national team when we were involved for, for many of years and we had English managers that took us and kept taking us to a level that they couldn't get over that, to, you know, to, to win in a trophy. They brought in Serena Wiegmann and, and within six months won a, a Euros with, with the England national team, the Lionesses, and then the next season gets to a World Cup final. So I think, it, I mean, if you look at it that way, I mean, there was no problem in a phone or an overseas manager taking our national team and bringing uh, silverware. So mm. it excites me. I think England manager Southgate completely changed the environment, completely changed, you know, fans and players and how they, you know, how they then uh, interacted. And, and I think he took them to the, as far as he could. And now I, I think Tuchel could. I, I think on. I think what the what the thought is, you know, you, international football is our country versus your country. You know, yeah. it's, it's national pride of the best of what we can offer versus the best of what you can offer. And, you know, maybe when you're, you're borrowing a manager from another country to come and help you know, your cl claim to go and try and win, maybe it dilutes it a little bit. Maybe that's where, um, you know, the feeling of, of disappointment of not having an English manager comes from. But as I touched on before, when you're talking about the Lionesses as well, when you've got a great squad of players, do you wait until a manager is ready from your country or do you go, well, actually, let's go and get one, somebody who's actually a proven winner? You say about proven winner, that's at club level, though. Do you think that, in terms of the graphic that we're just showing now, that, yes, you can go and be successful at club level, but does it translate into the international stage? Because, actually, when you look at the bottom two managers there, they've been promoted from within and gone on to win at international level. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that, you know, when you look at the trophies of, of the managers there on that list, it's, it's incredible. I think what they bring and what, what winners bring is in those difficult situations, in the moments, I, I really appreciate what Gareth Southgate did for, for the England national team. I'm, I'm a big fan of his. But a lot of talk was in that Euro finals at Wembley mm -hmm. against Italy. Were the decisions made correct? Would a manager who had that winning experience, you saw the big winner on that list was Roberto Mancini, yeah. 10 trophies. He knew what to do in those moments, in those pressure situations. He'd been there with the trophy on the line and he made decisions, preemptive decisions. So I think that's what you're hoping for. I think that's what you're hoping to guarantee. Also on that list, though, it showed the last two winners hadn't managed and, uh, you know, had, had come through the youth team level uh, to go on and take the roles and were successful but it hasn't necessarily worked for us, so it's time to try something else. Uh, Harry, were you surprised that Eddie Howe wasn't approached? Yeah, I think he's done a fantastic job, in, you know, certainly at Bournemouth, Newcastle. I mean, I, I, I half think, would he be open enough to, to say it, even though the job's been appointed to Tuchel? Would he be saying, now, yet yeah, they did approach me, kind of behind the scenes, um, or is he keeping it to himself? Mm -hmm. you, you would expect, when you look at the English coaches in the game at the minute... Um, that could potentially go and do a job in the national team, he would be one of the names that springs to mind. So, yeah, surprised that, that he wasn't one of the ten. But is he actually keeping that in and, and, and kind of not wanting to look as if he's done something behind the scenes at Newcastle? Do you think on the face of it, then, that the English, English like, the coaching pathway then has failed because we've not managed to now get an England manager? English manager? <sighs> it certainly looks like it. It certainly seems that... Um, developing tro developing uh, coaches through through the, the the ranks and having them go to take the the highest jobs we have in the land showed that it was capable with Gareth Southgate. But again, I go back to winners. I go back to this squad of players. Do we want to wait until? I mean, you give <clears throat> excuse me, you give a young manager, you give Lee Carsley the role now as the under twenty one manager. Is he ready to win the next tournament, or does he need time to develop? Mm -hmm. In doing so, do you waste the opportunity of these players? being in their prime. Yeah. And I think the FA have probably... I, I do think they like the position and the transition that young coaches are on, especially with the development from the 18s, the 21s, um, the progressing to the first team. But I think they want immediate success. OK, well, that's what we think over here. But what about over there? Let's check in with our man in Germany right now, Archie Rintut. Archie, thank you for joining us. Well, how is Thomas Tuchel viewed in Germany then? So I would have said before he was appointed England manager that he was seen more favourably in England than he was in Germany. I think that still is the case, despite the furore that there's been back home about what's been happening. He's seen in Germany as being a bit of an outsider within, with his eccentricities. He's seen as a very good coach, but he doesn't get the respect that he has in England for winning that Champions League with Chelsea, reaching the Champions League final with PSG, and because of what's gone on at Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich when he's been here, where he's fallen out with the club hierarchies, he's seen as being this difficult personality, albeit one who has a very good record in knockout competition. That's what, tell us a bit more about that, Archie, because obviously you do cover the Bundesliga and you managed to speak to him a lot throughout the season. So what was he like at Bayern and dealing with him on a personal level? He prefers to speak in English. I think his, his English interviews were often a lot more warmer. I think it's, it's partly to do with the way that we go about things. In, in Germany, the first question from a pit side reporter might be, you lost, why? Whereas we'll kind of dance around the fact a little bit more. And I think Thomas Tuchel was appreciative of trying to understand more the way that he works. He, he would sometimes throw me under the bus about my clothing, which I didn't appreciate, <laughs> but in all seriousness, <laughs> He, he was somebody I thought who would always say something interesting and revealing about what we'd just seen on the pitch. So I, 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 I can't really say that I had to work with him in a way that a player would have to work with him, but I always found him very interesting. Archie, I love your blazer today. I think it works great for football <laughs> fans. <laughs> in terms of, let's speak a bit more about his personality then. And I suppose what Gareth Southgate did so well was the relationship between the players and the media. Do you think he's great at that in terms of managing that style with players as well? I don't think that he'll put the care and attention that Gareth Southgate did into into managing the media i think that he's got a, a he's got a clearer way of how he wants to play and he will go the way that he thinks is right 
And managing the situation with having too many stars in the team, I think is going to be something that, that he'll look at because he will just have his way of playing and wanting to focus on that. I don't think that he'll be as obsessed, I would say, with trying to make sure that the right message is coming across. The main thing for him is winning. And the fact that he's in international football now instead of club football, I think is going to be actually a positive change for him.